So, Corrine, what does this accomplishment of being named a 2022 Young Retailer of the Year, what does this mean at this stage of your career? So I'm at a pretty early stage of my career so far. So this is a tremendous accomplishment and a tremendous honor um, so far. And when I think about um, this award, um, it really reminds me of how much work I've put in so far, how much hard work and dedication that I've put in um, through my nine years in this industry so far. Um, it also reminds me of how much farther there is to go, how much there is to learn, and how much there still is to accomplish um, people to get to know in the industry, um, and how much growth that there still is um, for me, hopefully, to be had. So was this your first career choice? And if not, what led you to home improvement retailing? It's a funny story. Actually, I started out um, at a technical school. Um, I have a degree in culinary arts and hospitality. Um, so I started out, I love food and I love the way it made people smile. Um, and it just brought people such joy. Um, so I really started enjoying working with people from a very young age. Um, and then halfway through college, I actually changed majors. Um, I got a degree in psychology, um, counseling psychology, because I wanted to work more with people um, and help people. I really enjoy helping people. Um, and then the stars aligned and I ended up in the home improvement industry. Um, it wasn't where I thought I was going to stay, um, but I've made a career um, here at Koopman Lumber. Um, I've been here nine years now, believe it or not. It wasn't what I planned on doing, but I really enjoy this industry for several reasons. Um, I love solving puzzles, um, and every customer that comes through the door, every receiving or purchasing conundrum, um, there's always something, a problem to be solved. And I love creative problem solving, but I also enjoy helping people and helping customers. Um, so everybody that comes through the door, it's an opportunity to help them put a smile on their face and get them on with their day. So the three pillars of this uh, are career accomplishments, um, community involvement, and hardware education. We'll take these one at a time. What stands out in your mind as your greatest career accomplishment at this very early stage of your career, and who helped you get there? So a couple years ago, um, our whole company, we had about 350 employees at the time. Um, our whole company was changing software systems. We were going from Epicor Eagle to Epicor BizTrack, um, which is a pretty large jump for any, anyone in the industry that's familiar with those softwares. Um, and we had a lot of people to be trained. Everyone in our company had to be retrained on how to do their job. Um, so um, my manager at the time, um, Daryl Baker, he tasked me with devising a training plan um, for our 80, around 60 to 80 retail staff. Um, so we put our heads together and I devised this training program um, that was about 10 weeks long. It involved um, online trainings, putting together itineraries for um, what trainings you had to take online before attending in-person sessions. Um, we had trained super users um, that were our go-tos that led these classes, live in-person classes of up to 10 people at a time. We had a whole class schedule. Um, and then we did open workshops, extra help. Um, and I really enjoyed working with all of the staff all at once. Um, a lot of people had a lot of anxiety about all of a sudden coming in one day and doing their job on a completely different software and what that was going to look like. Um, so I used, you know, all sorts of different skills to really help those employees and set them at ease and really get them the skills that they needed. Um, it was a huge group effort between myself um, and a whole bunch of people in our Koopman family. Um, but overall, that training itinerary is one of my proudest accomplishments mm -hmm. to date. And Epicor being a sponsor of this program, I'm sure they're going to want to hear more about this training program. Our Epicor team was great. We had Tom Rizzo and Kimberly and everyone. They were fantastic. They helped us through Go Live. Um, so that was a just momentous accomplishment, not only for me, but our whole company, the whole Koopman family. Um, so we're really proud of how, how well we did on changing softwares and the new softwares provided such wonderful opportunities for us. You know, the second pillar of this award is community involvement. And so as an independent retailer, can you talk about some of the ways that uh, Koopman is involved in the communities in which they have stores and, and personally how you are involved in, in some of these communities? Yeah. Um, so we are a small town company. We have 10 locations and about 400 um, employees across Massachusetts. Um, right now we're only in Massachusetts. Um, so we really, the employees that work for us and the customers um, that we're serving, we belong to the same communities. We see each other at the grocery store. Um, we help each other out. We see each other at town meetings. Um, so we're really involved in our community. We've done community cleanups. Um, we go to all the community events just to 
be there. We sponsor little league teams. Um, we do a lot of community sponsoring and donations to local schools and whatnot um, because it's really important to us. Um, even just the industry we're in, we're in home improvement, community involvement, um, kind of go hand in hand. Um, personally, I love doing community events where we go out into the community, we run a booth or we give out food samples off the grills that we sell. Um, just because it's it's great to shake hands and smile and the people that we're seeing that are, when we're out in the community at these events are the same people that come in our stores. And they get so excited to see us out there and they're like, hey, I know you. <laughs> um, so that's really great. Um, I love doing that type of thing. This year I'm hoping to get my team, um, my garden staff out to one of our community gardens mm. um, to volunteer some time. Um, that type of thing really is what brings our communities all together. And then the third pillar, ongoing education. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you have continued your own hardware education and then how uh, you promote the ongoing learning with your employees at Coopin? Um, Me personally, I love to learn no matter what it is. I love to soak up new information. Um, and we've done a ton of trainings. Um, I take part in some of the trainings, training staff, um, getting around um, vendor trainings. We love the NHPAs. Um, departmental mm -hmm. trainings, those are great for new hires, new staff, people new to the industry um, to nail down the basics. Um, and then going forward myself, just this past year, I've completed the um, RMCP course by you the just NHPA. graduated a few just days ago. Just yeah. graduated. Um, so I'm really proud of that. That was a great high level um, management course where we really dug into some really good like finances and um, leadership training. And I'm looking forward to sponsoring um, future people from Koopmans. Um, for next year and hopefully years beyond. We want to send a team every year and keep our business um, improvement projects going. Um, that was a great opportunity. Um, so that's really what we're looking forward to. Yeah, you made the finals of the business <laughs> improvement project competition, didn't you? We're very proud. Yeah, absolutely. So the last two years have, have been pretty crazy with the pandemic. <clears throat> Can you talk a little bit about what you have learned during that time? Um, definitely that no industry is immune to just craziness. Um, the pandemic, one day we woke up and the whole world was different, including what we were going into in our stores and our businesses. Um, overnight, we were doing twice the business with half the staff. I think most people in the industry kind of saw that happen. Um, and if it's one thing that really struck out to me is that purchasing can be a competitive sport, um, for sure. Um, when we had all these product shortages and stuff, um, our purchasing team was phenomenal. Um, they really put in the time and effort. And even in my department, I purchased live plants um, for our greenhouses. There was nights where I was up at midnight putting in the orders as soon as, you know, the order entries were, were open just to get the product in. Um, and our, our communities really um, appreciated that because we had a lot of stock um, and we really saw that it was because of just crazy purchasing. Um, so that's one thing that really struck out to me also is that our communities are strong. Um, and the home improvement segment, you know, was really important as people's attention toward turned um, like homeward. Um, people were spending more time at home. They really wanted to make their home what they wanted. They weren't going on trips. They were really focusing um, on home improvement over the last few years. Um, and I think that trend is going to continue um, as we go forward. I think people are realizing how important um, their homes are. Um, to just everything, not just trips and vacations and travel, um, but really where they spend their time. Um, they want to improve it, make it what they want. Um, so I don't think this industry is going to be going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So in your opinion, uh, what are some of the biggest opportunities that we have as independent retailers? Um, kind of piggybacking on the last question. Um, there's a ton of opportunities as the world is changing and as this pandemic has affected people. I think going forward, I don't think we're going to just snap back to what the world was before that. Um, I really think that people are putting more um, effort, money, and time into um, their homes, uh, building new homes, building what they want, developments, um, but also doing home improvement um, where they're at. Um, so I think that's, you know, a great opportunity. We've seen business really improve over the last few years where um, a lot of industries weren't as lucky. Um, so everyone needs a home. Home improvement isn't going anywhere. So how about your goals uh, for both the short and long term? So I pondered this question a lot. Um, where I am in my career, um, 
my career is still so young. I don't necessarily have a defined um, ABC plan. Mm -hmm. um, so far, I've kind of felt out where I want to be and what I want to do and what I want to learn. Um, and it's led me right now. Um, I'm branch administration manager at Koopmans, and I'm really enjoying this position because I get to work with so many different departments and so many different people. Um, but it also, it satisfies my need to learn because with all those different departments, there's, I'm always finding out new things, learning new things, and I get to problem solve. Um, so long term, that's kind of my plan to see where my career takes me um, and see what new opportunities present. So what do you love most about this business, Corrine? And, and what advice would you give to someone young like yourself considering embarking on a career in home improvement retailing? As someone who didn't necessarily plan um, on this type of career, um, I'm really enjoying it so far. It really satisfies my need to work with people um, as well as learn new things. I really cherish um, being a lifetime uh, learner. Um, and to anyone that really wants to come into this industry, I would tell them the same thing, be prepared to be constantly learning. Um, it's so important, whether it's formal education moving forward with you know, leadership and financial training and all that, um, or just learning every day on the job. I learn from my customers just as much as my coworkers sometimes. Um, so that's a big thing is you're never gonna be done. Um, there's always gonna be something new to learn, some new building code, new trends, um, and even in the trades, you're never gonna be done. Um, so just be prepared to learn for your whole life. So what can we as an HPA, your trade association, do to help you continue to succeed? So the biggest one there is um, I love all the resources that the NHPA gives us. We use, we just got a new hiring toolbox um, that we're looking into, um, different resources to help us hire. Um, we love all the um, trainings that are offered, whether it be um, small modules online for all the different um, departments, all the different products that we sell. Those are super helpful. Um, and then even the high-level trainings and roundtables, um, they're great opportunities to not only network, um, to learn those, those high-level skills, um, get to meet some really awesome um, speakers and um, notable people from our industry, and the networking opportunities are great. So I'm sure there's some folks you would like to thank. Of course. Um, there has been a ton of people um, at work and at home that have helped me get to this point. So I want to start by thanking um, first my family. From a young age, they really um, imparted on me like a strong work ethic and the idea that you should always be learning something new. Um, so that's very important to me, my family, my parents. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank the whole Koopman family with their support. I wouldn't be here. Um, it's been a great journey for the last nine years, and I, I love all of our um, coworkers, our customers. Um, so thank you um, to the Koopmans. Um, that's great. I'd also like to thank um, Daryl Baker of Oracle Company. Um, I worked with him for a long time, um, and he was a great mentor. Also, um, Jim Malo, he was our marketing manager. Um, he spent a lot of time mentoring me and teaching me all sorts of stuff about the industry. Um, and my current manager, um, Matt Nichols, who nominated me. We went through the RMCP course together, and it was a great opportunity. Um, and he provides great support every day as we do our jobs. So thank you to everybody. Well, congratulations again, Kareen. Thank you so much. Thank you.